Hey robot makers, I hope you're having a good day so far. So do you want to build a robot with MicroPython with up to 12 servos? So it's time to upgrade Pico Crab and uh, <laughs> revisit a project from the box of shame. So let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin, come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code and have a whole load of fun along the way. Okay, let's get over to our, our keynote slides. And yes, I know we can get rid of that. I thought I'd put this on do not disturb. There we go. Let's let's do that. Do not disturb <laughs> until tomorrow. There we go. Cool. Anyway, as we were saying. So yes, today's show is all about uh, returning to Pico Crab, having a look at it. It's a quite sorry state at the moment. It needs some much uh, needed upgrades. So we're going to have a look at how we can do that. We're going to have a recap over PCAB, uh, Pico Crab 1. We're going to have a look at what the Pico Crab 2 upgrades are all about. We're going to have a look at the um, Wukong 20... Is that how you pronounce it? Wukong 2040. And we're going to look at um, some walking cycles as well. Um, we're going to revisit some code from... Uh, the Smiles Quad project back in the day. And um, we can recycle that code to make this work too. So we'll have a quick look at that and then we'll have a bit of a demo and just see what we can do with this uh, this really cool board. Okay, it sound, sound like fun. And if you're watching on the live stream, we'll have a bit of a QA and a and a bit of a mailbox as well. Mailbag, I've got quite a lot of stuff to show you there as well. Okay, so configuring each of the legs. Um, not sure why I've jumped into this one straight away. Let me have a quick look at my slide ordering. I think... Uh, uh, oh no, that, that'll be okay. We can we can go over this. So, um, so this is essentially a rehash of this robot that I built quite a while ago. This is a Smiles Quad. This was designed by Kevin Thomas, by the way. Uh, and this one featured a Raspberry Pi Zero, and it's got the little Pi camera. This can do like face detection and stuff like that. But the actual leg mechanisms, how they actually work, is really quite neat. Um, so I sometimes borrow things like that if they work well. So on this one, I'm going to use the actual graphics, so you'll see on the slide there. So one of the first things we need to do when we put in together a robot and this is the robot we're building today. This one's got some places where we can put our servos and it has these sort of leg things very similar to that Smiles quad that we've just looked at just there. So what we need to do is we need to have some um, calibration, some minimum and maximum settings for each of these legs. And this just stops them crashing into each other. So a bit of trial and error I discovered using this little protractor online here. Uh, the, the left leg, the right leg, they need to go between 9 and 90 degrees or 90 and 180 degrees. And we can ignore the channel bit. That's essentially just the servo pin, the GPIO pin that we're going to be using. And they're probably not the right ones, actually, for this. Uh, and then the back leg and the back left leg and back right leg also need a similar kind of thing. So they're going to be go between 90 and 180 and 9 and 90, roughly. Um, curious as to why that isn't like 100 and... 71 degrees but it was probably to do with sometimes servos don't go from 0 to 180 they go a bit past that uh, sometimes it's going to go like minus 0 numbers as well like minus 10 it completely depends on the servo that you're using so pico crab one back in the day I've got it on my desk and I'll show you the sorry state of it. So this was the original design I did. Uh, so this was going to be Raspberry Pi Pico powered when the Raspberry Pi Pico just came out. And my Fusion 360 skills weren't the best when I designed this. So you can see I borrowed heavily from the Smiles Quad Robot. So those leg mechanisms are pretty much stolen from that. Uh, the bit I brought to this is the sort of crab shape. And unusually this one just has two legs. So it needs four servos, one for each, uh, two for each limb. And it only has two legs, which is weird. So it kind of crawls a bit and the back will drag. Uh, that didn't work out too great as it turns out. This one was also tethered. There was no battery. So commonly now I will use, let's grab one of these, one of these little LiPo batteries that's got the JST pH connector on it. These are really, really easy and really small. This one's a 400 mAh battery. So more than enough for about, you know, an hour's play with your robots. The mess, the design on this one was an utter mess. So in the actual Fusion 360 files, what I'd started with was just like a Smars um, chassis. And then I basically took bits away and added bits to it. And it ended up like a really long timeline of, of sort of transactions that you do in Fusion 360. And it wasn't very easy to follow or correct mistakes. So it ended up just getting worse and worse and worse. It's a bit like building a wall. You think, oh, it'll be fine on the next layer. It ends up just looking all wonky. That's kind of what happened behind the scenes on this one. Uh, and the, there was no code as well for this one. This one was entirely just uh, a design idea. Um, and I thought it'd be fun to do like a crab with the little eyes using the rangefinder. 
So Richard clearly <laughs> cleverly points out there, crabs have six legs and they absolutely do. So that means we need more servos um, on, our, on our robot. So this new design is going to have four legs for walking and two legs for grabbing. Um, and this one will also have um, some MicroPython code based on the Smars Quad code that we put together. This is one of the beautiful things about just using Python for our robots. We can go between like a Raspberry Pi Zero that's a full running the full um, Python 3 stack and also go back to like an ESP32 or a Feather or a obviously Raspberry Pi Pico. So it means we can switch between these quite easily and have the same code running. So this one is going to be powered by a Raspberry Pi Pico W, so we can have that wireless connectivity. And we're going to use this uh, Elect Freaks Wukong 2040, which is a really cheap board. We're going to have a closer look at that in a minute. And that provides power and also all the headers for the servos as well. So it's a really great board for exactly this kind of thing. So this is the design. It's um, a, I've gone for a kind of low poly design, if you know what I mean by low poly. So um, in computer games, sometimes you, you try and build as low poly count uh, graphics as possible so they have like very flat sides that look quite triangular and this keeps the uh, the amount of memory required to draw these on screen quite low but they also look quite fun so i've gone for a, a bit of a low poly design on this um so if we look at some of the features of the phone, so we've got the Raspberry Pi Pico W at the top there we have 10 servos on this one so there are six uh, limbs um, I've not actually put the arms on it yet. I'm doing sort of grab arm motion. Um, but you can see that it's got the four regular kind of like quad smiles type uh, limbs on there. So one for the sort of arm movement and one for the, the leg movement. Um, we've also got an 18650 battery, which is like the batteries that are used in, in Tesla cars, in uh, e-cigarettes, in... Um, what else are they used? There's all kinds of places that they use torches and all kinds of electronics. So they're very, very popular, very common, uh, and, and they're rechargeable. So this means that this is really great to be able to add this to our robot too. It's going to run MicroPython code, and obviously it's going to be using this uh, Wukong 2040 board as well. So the design is a work in progress. Like I said, it's missing the sort of claws at the front and um, also there's going to be like a face section that I'm going to add to this as well. And I have even bought some red PLA, which I've got just down uh, on the floor next to me. So I'm going to be printing this out. I printed this sort of prototype version just using the filament that was on there, which is this blue and also the uh, the yellow, which just happened to be on my uh, 3D printer. So that's the, uh, the chassis first iteration it usually takes me about three iterations to get things right and when iteration two of the legs already so just to put that into context so the uh, the wukong 2040 let's have a look at this this is a really great board um so this is aimed at education and hobbyists so they've kept the price um they've done some value engineering to keep the price really low uh, so for this kind of board I would expect you'd probably pay upwards of like $20 or something like that, but they've kept the price really low, so it's like $9.99, I think, and it seems to be quite widely available uh, on their store and also on uh, Amazon. And the, the big thing about this one is it's powered by the 18650 battery. So they've got this great big 18650 uh, battery holder on there. You'll have to source the battery yourself. That doesn't come included. And it has 12 servo headers, which is insane. I think that's probably only matched um, by the... Um, um, Inventor 2040, no, the, the Servo 2040 from Pimeroni. I know they have a load of, uh, they have like 18 servo headers on theirs. And there's also the, um, what's it called? These, these things, these PCA9685 boards, these have like a whole bunch. I think it's got 16 headers on there. But this requires like an external connection, an external power. Ugh. That's originally what I have um, plugged into the, to the Pico uh, Crab version 1. So I like this, it's kind of all in one. Also has two RGB LEDs, and the clever thing with this is these are NeoPixel com kind of compatible. They're, they're an LED strip. So although there is actually two LEDs, and you've got all the different colors of them, it's one, one pin is taken up. So that's really smart, really clever use of some electronics there. So they use that WS2812, uh, is it? 2818? 2812, I think it is. Um, uh, protocol for sort of sending colors to the lights so we can light those up very very easily we can use them as status indicators or just a bit of fun just to give our robot a bit of an interesting look to it um we also have um two user buttons we can press like an a and b button if we want to make them do something like stop or go or 
perform a particular action after a certain number of clicks. That's quite useful if you're debugging your code as well. You could put in there like a button thing just to make it stop and wait. Um, and also, the it has a Lego compatible base. Well, I'll get it out in a second. And um, in fact, let me just grab hold of it and we can have a look at it closer. There we go. Unplug the bits and pieces from it. So I've got one here. I'll, I'll go over to the uh, the main camera so you can see this. So this is currently got a battery in it and it's actually powered up as we speak. There's a little LED that's just sort of glowing just near my finger there. And it also has this uh, on off switch. So you can switch this on and off very simply like that. Has this Lego compatible thing. So this is quite neat. Uh, that means we can use it with like Lego projects. We can plug in uh, Lego Technics type stuff or uh, Mindstorms stuff. Got the Raspberry Pi Pico in there that doesn't come with it so you have to provide that yourself and then you've got all these glorious headers on there as well so there's like up to uh, 12 servos on there and in the middle there is some i squared c i think it's that way up so i squared c headers it also has four motor connectors so one of one of my sort of bugbears on projects is when you get um, a board and, and this is a bad example this is kittronics one this is a pico robotics board from uh, kittronics this one has a, a decent number of motor connectors on there so you could have um, on this one four motors i like four motors because that means we can do mechanism wheels we can control each wheel and have four wheels on there so this has that as well and then the other thing it has is a buzzer so on there there's a little buzzer and that means we can do all kinds of sound stuff as well it's just on pin 9 that one gpi or pin 9 there's a reset button as well just to make it really easy to sort of reset your code um, and i think they're the major features on there it also has a usb micro b connector there as well as the one on the pico and that's just to charge up so it has all the charging circuitry to charge up the 18650 and uh, that one seems to be happily powered up you can see the green led there uh, on it too so it's uh, pretty chunky uh, it's not exactly small but the, the battery is the thing that really that defines the the size of the board i guess so i've designed this pico crab to pretty much just encompass this so this can sit in there nice and tidily and uh, be completely enclosed by that so and then all the servo headers will basically just plug into wherever they need to go on here let's just plug that one in there and the next one into the one next to it like so we've got plenty of space to put all our our servos so i'm really liking this uh, this board so yeah for, for 9.99 i think that's actually quite a decent value for money for that so um, and we'll we'll have a look at like the website for that uh, in a bit so configuring each of the feet let's get into how we're going to configure our robot so we need um a couple of pins for this so if we have um, four limbs we need to have eight motors eight servos which means we need eight pins i've called them channels on here simply because when i wrote this code um, i was using these uh, 18 these are pca 9685 and these are called channels so that each of the servo things that you can plug into they call them channels and that's because you can also drive um led things from them as well so it's kind of interchangeable but for, for the purposes of this, just think about GPIO pins when you see the word channel. So we need to set for each of these for the feet as well as for... So we looked before at setting the minimum and maximum for the arms. And then if you think the feet on the, um, on the robot, so it's going to be similar to this. This is the sort of arm and then this is the foot. And um, again, we need to set the minimum and maximum angle for each of these. Now, because of the way that the motors, the servos are actually arranged on these robots... Some of them are sort of pointing one direction and some of them are pointing the other direction, which means we have to invert the code for making the motors go from 0 to 180. We just need to be mindful of that. So I created a little flag in the class that represents each of these limbs and I just call it inverted. So it's either true or false if it's inverted. And that's what that means if it's pointing one way or another way. So you can pretty much see there between 50 degrees, if we go on a little... Um, protractor down here from 50 degrees all the way up to 150 degrees that's the range of motion that we want to have and that's more than enough for it to make the leg uh, be clear of any objects when it's walking so that's the first thing we needed to configure and we we need to think about movement commands as well so what we want to be able to do is move our robot forwards and backwards turn left turn right and we want it to be able to stand up um, so it's sort of clear and then sit down so its limbs have left the floor as well 
and we also want to be able to set the limbs to a kind of default position and I like this X position. I was thinking about what to call this so I've come up with some names for these different positions just to help me out. So the first position um, is the stretch position so the robot's kind of stretched out like this with its limbs um, kind of what's that vertical to its body as we look at it on the screen. So these are the different positions that we're going to have. We're going to have the stretch position. We're going to have a body position where it's kind of like a T shape or its arms going out horizontally. We're going to have that default or swing position, as I call it. So that's like the X position. We're going to have the foot up and the foot, <laughs> foot up and foot down. I'm doing the sort of motions here with my arms. Um, so position in the limbs. This is the, um, the body position. So you can see there it's kind of like a bit of a T pose. Its arms uh, are pointing kind of towards its body that way out. Um, and that's going to be one of the commands that we need to send to each of the limbs when we're moving our robot around. Next one is this default or swing one because this is where we want to start our walking cycle from. It just means it's easier for us to understand what's going on. It's kind of like a halfway between the minimum and maximum of each of them. And the actual walking cycle itself, this is how we're going to do this. So I was thinking and it, it took me quite a while to figure this out, how to best sort of represent this and figure this out in my own mind and I like truth tables I like to be able to sort of have like a sheet a table uh, of all the different things that we're going to do step by step so I thought for each of the eight different servos um, they split into legs and feet and then each of the legs and feet split between the front and the back and the left and the right and that's the same with the feet as well so we've got the legs the feet the front and back front and back front left leg front right front right back left back right front left front right back left and back right as well now for each of these there is this essentially four major steps to the walking cycle and each of these steps has three sub steps or micro steps in each of them so if we think about our robot let's see if we can uh, if we have our robot here for example this is just the smiles quad because i've got this one built already this one is going to start out with the limbs in that kind of uh default position like that the feet are going to be down and the, the limbs are going to be in that sort of x position and what we want to do is make our front right so as i'm looking at the robot i'm kind of looking at it like this it's front right is going to is that right on your side as well so it's front right is going to go up so what that means is this foot is going to lift up so it's no longer touching the floor so the only limbs that are touching the floor is the the other three and it's then going to do the body stretch position so it's going to do um, the front left leg, which is this one, is going to go to the body. So that's going to go like that. And that will make the robot slightly move up because it's it's got some uh, pressure on the ground there and that's going to make it move up slightly. The front right is going to go to the stretch position. So while this isn't touching the floor, it's going to move all the way to the top like that. And then the third thing is that front right is going to go down. So that's now going to be making contact with the floor like so. So that's the very first step. And this is how we're going to go through each step of our of our walking cycle. So there's the full cycle. We'll have a look at some of the other ones a bit closer. But you can see there what we need to do. So four major steps, um, three sub steps for each, 12 steps in total and eight motors that we're, we're, we're sort of going through. And I had to sort of do this one bit at a time to try and figure out how to make this robot walk. And it does work. So the second step, um, we'll have a look at that one next, but we can print this out. I've actually got this as a downloadable cheat sheet as well, um, so you can download that too. I'll, I'll find the link for that in a minute. So we've looked at that first step. So we've um, we've we've lifted our front right up. We've uh, we've done the body and the stretch, and then we put the foot down. The next one is step two. So that's going to make that front leg that was currently in the body position like that. That's going to go to the stretch position. So that's going to go up. So we're going to lift the front foot first, then we're going to do the stretch position. We're going to move the other thing to the body position. Again, that will make it move forward and then the foot goes down. So it's kind of doing like a bit of a doggy paddle kind of thing, but with its, its arms moving around as well. Uh, the third position is just about the back legs. So they're just going to sort of keep up um, and they're going to go to the body. The, so it's going to take the back left leg up. It's going to move the back left um, leg to the stretch position the back right is going to go to the body position and then the back left leg is going to go down so you can see there the ones are in orange they're the ones that we're, we're sort of doing next and if you like these kinds of videos 
consider giving this video a, a thumbs up. It costs you nothing. Uh, I've put loads of effort into these videos, as you can probably imagine, each weekend and through the week as well. I'll put loads of effort into sort of putting, coming up with a new robot, a new design and a new theme each week. Um, so give this video a like if you're watching this. Drop me a comment. Let me know if uh, you've built any walking robots. If you have, let me know all about it. I want to know about everybody's robots. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, that's probably one of the best ways that's free that can help me out. So if you're watching this and you don't want to pay any money, but you do enjoy watching the shows, definitely hit the subscribe button. I think 72% of people who watch these don't subscribe, uh, but they do come back to watch more, which is weird. So it doesn't cost you anything, but it does help me with the, uh, the sort of figures. Uh, so I understand that people want to watch more of these. And I do go live every single Sunday, come rain or shine, <laughs> come illness or, or health. Um, I'll go live at seven o'clock GMT. So join me if you can then. Okay, back to the cycle, the walking cycle. So step four. So these are on the back legs. The back left, uh, uh, the back right leg is going to be lifted up. It's then the back left leg is going to move to the body position. So that's going to sort of go like that, sort of stretched out. The uh, back right leg is going to go down. And also we have the other, the right leg to the stretched position as well. So that makes the whole body move forward. And then once we've completed that, we can then go right back to step one and do the step two and step three and keep doing that. And it'll just keep keep walking now because we've broken these steps down into individual sort of micro steps that means that we can we can do some clever programming so that we don't say move forward and it does all of these commands and then waits for the next command to move forward we can have this continually moving forward um, because it's actually doing all these micro steps and doing parts of the micro steps at a time I call them ticks so each time it does a tick it will perform the next thing that it needs to do to try and make these motors achieve the, the position that we're, we're we've targeted them going to um, and that means that we can quickly change our mind if we wanted to so if we had a web console for example controlling this through the peak or w we could say turn left so halfway through a walk cycle it could then immediately change and do the next thing instead so it means it's really flexible and really quick to respond so if you want to learn about how to do things in MicroPython and build robots, I've put together a free resource for this on uh, kevsrobots.com slash learn forward slash. Uh, and there's a whole load of different courses on there. So one of them is MicroPython from scratch. So if you want to learn about how to program in MicroPython, you want to try this out yourself, get yourself a Raspberry Pi Pico and maybe one of the uh, Wukong boards as well, then uh, you can do that. And also there is a Robotics 101, so you want to learn a bit more about robotics. And there is also a learning resource for like a glossary and how things work. So all on kevsrobots.com. I'm constantly improving that and making that a better resource. So check that out too. Okay, if you haven't joined me on Discord already, you might want to go and consider checking out uh, kezrobot.com slash Discord for a sign-up link. We've got a really growing community. I dip in as much as I can uh, during the week, and there's just so much uh, activity going on there. It's quite, it's quite nice to see, actually, the people helping each other out with code and fixing problems and so on. And if you haven't followed me on social media, so I'm on uh, TikTok, Kevin McAleer 6 on TikTok, so I post... Uh, I think I post TikTok first because it has like a really nice interface for putting little videos together. Um, I then post to Instagram, probably the same video. <laughs> and then they get the, the you kind of get all the extra badges being added to the video clip there. But yeah, I post pictures uh, and reels to Instagram. So I'm uh, at Kevin McAleer on Instagram. And then on Twitter, I'm at Kev's Mac. So you can see on uh, what I'm up to and I pretty much hang out on, on Twitter all the time. Uh, I'm also on Mastodon, so if you go to Kesmac at Mastodon Social, I try and cross post as much as I can. Everything I post to Twitter, I will cross post to Mastodon as well. Doesn't seem to be as active as I find as uh, Twitter, but I do post it there as well. And if you want to support the show, so um, if you've already hit the like button, already dropped me a comment, and already subscribed, and you want to help even further, if you're watching this um, um, on replay, you can do a super thanks. So I think next to the um, the buttons underneath the screen there's a little super thanks button you can press that and uh, that'll like buy me a coffee effectively you can do a super chat if you're watching this live now um, that means um, I'll be able to see um, 
that pop up on my screen. I'll actually enable that now so I can see if anybody does that. And also if anybody subscribes, I've just switched on stream elements there. And if you want to buy me traditional coffee, like a physical coffee, <clears throat> you can go to kesrobots.com slash coffee and there's a link there to do that too. And for the price of a coffee per month, if you want to do that as a, a bigger commitment to help me build more robots and buy more of these uh, expensive servos that I have to keep buying every single time I build a new robot, then you can join the YouTube membership program. And I think that's about... Um, it's about three pounds or something like that a month so after you've subscribed there's like, that's replaced by a join button you can click that and uh, sign up there cool so let me just uh, click on that there we go so uh, the supporters these are people who've already supported the show and there's a uh, there's a growing number of people uh, who are becoming either youtube members or just being very kind and supporting the show uh, through buy me a coffee so our YouTube members, we've got uh, Jose, we have uh, Hybrid Robotics, which is Dale, we have uh, Skipper Banks, we've got uh, Sadiq, we have Jeff, we have uh, WP Body, we have Bill, we have Hans from Cheerlights, we have uh, Michael, we have Fraser, we have John, and we have Tom as well. And then supporter-wise, so these are people who've um, um, bought a coffee recently. So Tom, uh, sorry, Roland, Roland bought uh, two coffees recently. Thank you so much for that, Roland. I really appreciate that. We have Marcus, we have... Um, uh, at Braun SL, we have Carol as well. And then members, these are people who bought, joined the uh, Buy Me A Coffee membership program. So we've got John, we have Tom, we have Keith, we have Shemi, we have Steve. So thank you guys so much, guys and girls, for um, supporting the show. It really helps uh, and makes a difference. Okay, so let's get back over to here. So that's all my slides. So what I wanted to show you now then is um, uh, give you a bit of an update on where we are at with this. So this is the sorry state of the original Pico crab. So you can see there, it's kind of in pieces. There's uh, there's different. So I designed these um, claws originally, and I don't know if you can spot the problem there. So that's the bit where the servo horn would go. Let me just grab a servo horn. And there's actually nowhere for that to go into. So there's no like slot. Normally on these things, there'll be a slot. So if I just grab this one, there's a slot for the servo horn to go into. I'm trying to do this, I've not actually sorted these ones out yet. So that will go into that groove there. Oh, in fact, here's one I prepared earlier. So yeah, I forgot to actually put the, the groove in there and I printed this thing out. And I did this on that ultra fine mode, so it's like really nice and smooth and everything. Uh, but yeah, utterly useless because I can't actually use that. I could probably gouge it out or use like a heat, like a soldering iron to do that. But this was the original one, which is the same design as the, uh, the Smiles quad feet. You can see they're the same there. And that's the d design I created. So you can see that there isn't actually any screws or anything. So this was back in the days when I was uh, copying the the SMARS sort of philosophy to make sure that nothing had screws in it so everything was screwless and just sort of pushed fit together but it does mean things are quite you can see they're quite wobbly um, and now I prefer to do captive nuts so using screws to sort of screw things together so what I've done then is I've designed this new version this is the Pico Crab version 2 so we've got the um, uh, the robot um, Wukong board in there it's powered up we can plug the uh, can plug the cable in and we can play with some code on here let me just plug this into the pico so this one is just a pico we can use a pico w uh, when we get round to that i heard something fall on the floor then but i didn't drop it <laughs> it wasn't me um so this has got it's currently got two servos in one of the servos that's plugged in currently is one that's actually burnt out that's from the bubo but you can see these are the um these nice DS929MGs, so they're quite small. Uh, they're a slightly different shape or size to, I don't know if I've got one, the other ones to hand, the SG90s that you see everywhere. So in fact, this, there's one in here actually, we can probably pop out. Let's see if we can bring this to come out of there. No, this isn't going to be very easy to grab out actually because it's uh, it's really in there. <laughs> but yeah, the, these are the the regular kind of size ones. And if we look at this one, uh, the ever so slightly the the sort of turret part of it is ever so slightly a different size. Uh, but I think they're the exact same width and height. So it's about uh, 23 for that main body there, and they're about 12 millimeters sort of thick. 
So what I've done is I've created a few different parts. So these are very similar to this, this shape. With, so it's got that kind of rotating thing that uh, rotates on the um, this servo. So what I've done is I've, I've redesigned these. These ones are actually 3D printed and I've not cleaned them up yet. So they've still got some of the, uh, the support stuff in there. They've literally just finished printing this afternoon, so I didn't have time to assemble the robot, um, but you get the idea there. So this is exactly the same kind of thing as this. And what we've got on here then, is so rather than having these sort of push in and have these little diamond shapes sort of hold them in place, I've decided to just use regular screws because they just work. So I've got a whole bunch, I've got eight of these DS929MGs. This is how they come out of the box. And uh, these are really nice quality. They've, they're a bit pricey. I think they're at nine pounds each. Pimmer only had them on a sale, so I bought a whole bunch of them. So you can see there, these are, uh, get that to focus in there, DS929MGs. So the metal and the, the digital, they're very high quality. So essentially what happens here is these will just push into there push into there like that and then you can put two screws in to secure that and then what I will then do is I will underneath here again I've not cleaned this up yet so there's a bit of mess on there but there's a hole and there is a little nodule on here so they're sort of a line there and then let's see if I can get this to uh, to go in roughly where it needs to go no snapping it there we go so that needs a bit of cleanup. But essentially we've got the arm piece there and then there's another hole there for the next servo to go into, uh, like that one's gone into. And again, there's another two holes. And then that's when we get the, the leg piece and that will be easier to show on that one. Again, these need a bit of cleanup because they've just come off the printer. So there is a bit of a hole there. Let's get that piece out there. So there's a hole there which has got a space for the servo header to sort of slot into, the, ser the servo horn to slot into. And that will go over that. And then when it's in place, see if I can get this to go over without snapping it. Like so, it just needs a bit of clean up I suspect. And that needs pushing into place as well. So then that can move up and down and it can move side to side. So when it's on the robot like so, it can move like that and it can move side to side and that means we've got space for six servos on here and then another two on there so eight in total i might even include more on the the the, the arms but the original design of these just had like a fixed claw um, so what i could do i could put a servo in there and have a claw that can articulate as well as the arms so they can they can grab that's kind of what i'm thinking about and i've not designed anything for the face yet so we could do a couple of things on this. Let's just grab, um, which box is it? These various different boxes in here. One of these has got, there we go. Bought a couple of these ESP32 cameras. Um, so there's a little motherboard there, but you don't actually need that. You just need five volts to go into here. And then you can put that on the front and then you can see what the robot can see. So we could design something like that. Maybe have two of them, that'd be pretty cool. So that's kind of what I'm thinking there. Now I've got two of these quad smart robots. This one I designed for the, the micro bit. So this has got a slightly different chassis on it. This is the original print I did on my very first 3D printer. And then I've got the one that I spent a bit more time printing out with some nicer quality um, pieces on there and that's got the Raspberry Pi Pico looks like the original Pico Zero without the Wi-Fi and it's got the uh, the camera module one version one on there as well so it can do some object detection so these all suffer from the fact that they need to have one of those um, PCA, PCA 9685 boards to plug all the servos into that's actually at the back on these ones whereas on this one they can all plug directly into that board because they're all just there this one's powered up, so we can probably play around with this a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to actually take this off. And I'm going to put the servo horn on here so we can see it moving about. Right. So what I'll do now, I'll go back over to me for a second. I'll just get, um, 
I'll focus myself as well. <laughs> Come on, focus. It's me. Look at my face. There we go. Um, let's go to Thonny. So the crab.py code is actually a cleaned up version of the SMARS quad code. If I just scroll to the very top. So there you go. Based roughly on the SMARS Python library that I created back in September 2018. So this is quite old code. Um, but it does what we need it to do. So I've defined all the pins there. I've actually not properly sorted these out. What I will do is create like a diagram with each of the servos and which pin GPOs each of these need to connect to. Um, that looks like it basically replicates the same thing that this pins thing does. Excuse me, so I don't know why I've got that there. And then what I've then done is I've created this leg. It should really be called limb because it represents the entire limb, the two servos for each limb either a leg or a foot and it's got a whole bunch of different variables kind of private variables that's what this double underscore means it means they're sort of hidden away from the user so we've got the minimum and maximum values now these are currently described in pulse widths so we could just describe them as angles rather than pulse widths which is what we've got down here we don't need both of them that's a bit verbose um, and then in fact they they're incompatible with each other actually We've got the swing angle, so for this particular leg, what, what value is that? The body angle, the stretch angle, and the current angle, whether it's inverted or not, and what the, the different angles are there as well, so a zero. And then we've got simply, you know, what is the return the property angle? So that means we don't have to have little brackets around it. We can just say, uh, what, what is the value of angle? Uh, initializing it so we want to have a pin we can give it a name if we want like left leg something like that useful we can provide the minimum um, angle and maximum angle and also whether it's inverted or not so we then basically just see if any of those things are defined we can just set them in there and then i was quite verbose in this code by using properties so setting and getting various different things they're not always necessary if, if if you don't do anything else with it, you just return the value and store the value, you probably don't, don't need to do that. Uh, but I did that in some cases just so I could say, if it isn't an instance of an integer, then just say, oops, the lim minimum angle setter was expecting a value to be uh, an integer. Please try again, but with a valid number between zero and 180. So a bit of extra robust code there. Um, and then making sure that it's a valid uh, angle between zero and 180. So that's what that piece of code there does. Um, and then we've got similar kind of ones for setting the maximum value. So again, the similar kind of uh, error checking code. Uh, we can say what the pin value is. We can set the pin. We've got some extra checking again. And uh, we can also set this value here about the maximum pin number. So I think on this uh, Wukong, it's pin 28 is the, the maximum pin that we can address. So that's that there. Uh, what else have we got? So the invert just returns or sets the invert value, which is just a true or false flag. And then the default position will set the leg to be its default position. So that default one is the, the X position. It's halfway between the minimum and maximum. So halfway between minimum and maximum is leg maximum minus lin, um, leg minimum. And then we just set the current angle to be that as well. We could just, we could just have that bit say self to angle but i don't know why it chose to be so verbose there again different programming styles you can see how my um, my programming abilities have probably improved over the past five years i'll probably write less code now and make it clearer um so then the body so these are now all the different positions so the body position just sets them to the minimum angle uh, or if it's inverted um, it'll set it to the opposite of that um, so either the minimum or maximum stretch so each of these will have this if it's not inverted stretch it to either the minimum or more maximum um, identity so what this identify thing what i wanted to do on here is create like a configuration uh, program so when you've just plugged all your servo wires in and you want to figure out which one is your front left leg you could just say right go to pin number zero and make it identify itself and it will just wiggle a little bit so it just goes between the 80 and 100 degrees and it just makes it wiggle a little bit five times so it's just a way of identifying what your limbs are and then you can go back into your code and then say right i know i now know that pin zero is the front left leg for example swing position again just sets it to that swing position which is the default position i think so again that's that could just say 
just run the default that we've got further up. I don't know why I did it twice. And then we've got up and down, so this makes the limbs go up or down. So if it's like the foot, it'll raise or lower. Um, we can get it go to a middle position. So again, that's the same as the default position. I could just have said that. <laughs> and then show. Uh, what this one will do is this one will just print out the pin number and the pin name. Now, if I was to rewrite that now, I would probably do it a bit simpler. I would just say print and then F as an F string. And we could just say um, um, GPIO pin number. Oops, a space in between and a B there. And then I'd use the little squiggly brackets and then just say self dot pin. And then that would do the same thing. And then we could also say, or have the name at the beginning, we could say um, limb and then self dot name is on GPO pin number, blah, blah, blah. So we could get rid of that like so, <clears throat> and just have that one line. It makes it clearer and easier to understand, hopefully. I guess that's easier to understand if you've never seen Python before, but this looks, it's a bit more esoteric because you've got an F at the beginning and you've got these squiggly brackets, but um, that's how I would probably write that piece of code now. Then the angle setter. So this one just checks to see, again, is it a valid number between zero and 180? If it is, then it will set the leg angle to be whatever the user angle that we've just provided into this function. And I probably would think about reworking this as well with a guard statement. So rather than having like ifs and within ifs, I might just at that point, if it isn't, so if, if it's not between zero and 180, then I would basically just return false and come out the, uh, the function. And then we could have the next block of code, so it just isn't nested. Um, so what that would look like, let's do that. So we could say if not that, then we could then basically just break out of that code. Are we in a loop? We're not in a loop, so we could just do return, sorry. Like so. And then we wouldn't need to have this if um, indented. So we can just go to there and then we can... How do we do this on here? Is it shift tab? We can have that in line. It just makes the code a bit easier to read. One of the things about Python is you have to use indentation to, to show blocks. So if you've got ifs nested within ifs nested within ifs, it makes your code like right over there. And <laughs> you have to sort of start scrolling about to see it. Uh, so this has the same effect. So we've, we've got an if statement. If it's not true, then we return, we come out of the function. Otherwise, we then execute this block of code down here um, and so if that's true, then we return true. Otherwise, we return false, return false. So we probably don't need to have that piece of code there is never going to execute because we've returned there. So what we can probably do is just get rid of that line and we can just indent, outdent that like so. So do that, return true. That can just be still in there. There we go. And otherwise, return false. Okay, so that's uh, that's the, what do we call that, the angle setter. Next, there's two pieces of code. One is called tick, one is called untick. They do the same thing. They make the thing walk forward or backwards or perform that kind of action of the walk cycle. Um, and depending on what the left leg or right leg or left back leg or whatever, it will perform a different uh, thing within there. So these are similar to that... Uh, that table that we looked at before, that truth table, this is where that code kind of lives. Um, next, we've got setting the name, setting and getting the name. And that's everything for the for the, the legs, the limbs. And then we've then got the robot itself. So Pico Crab lives in this code here. So we simply, we have, we've got a leg and a feet array. And then what we, we need to do is just add each of the feet and the legs to the correct arrays. And we just have to make sure that we have the, the correct pin numbers for them. So what I probably would do down here, rather than saying pin one, I would use the, um, I would have a constant because then I can, it doesn't matter what it is. I just change it one value at the top. So that's probably how I would do that now. Um, so that's that identified as the, the wiggle thing. Now I, I went through the, I thought I was being really clever by doing this, but it, it makes my code really long. So I've got these comments in here that describe what the function does. 
so describes the parameters and describes the return values. That's really good if you're writing like professional code, but for this, I mean, it's added like an extra, how many lines of code just for that? Um, and I'm not sure the value that, that actually adds now. So I don't know whether I would do that or not. So then, for example, setting the limb pin, I mean, it's quite ex self-explanatory what this does. Um, so for limb in self legs or for limb in self feet, it just adds the, the limb and the foot. If it's found, then it sets the, changes the pin number. If the limb is not found, then it just says, I'm sorry. Again, there's, there's some in, indented if statements. I'd probably re-look at that, see if I can refactor it. And what else we've got, config. So I'm not sure if I would use this now or not. And then we've got a debug one. I think this just prints out stuff. No, it just sets the debug value. Good grief. So I've got all that text there and all it just is just returns or sets the debug value to true or false. Yep, a bit verbose that. And then invert the feet. This simply just sets or gets the invert flag. And then the default position just moves them to default position. Right, so we've got all this stuff. We're only halfway through the code there. Um, and this is pretty similar. This just sets them to the stand, the body, the stretch, the turn left and turn right. So let's have a look what happens there. So turn right basically just makes it move these legs to their particular positions and then does the swing position after it's finished. So it's kind of shuffle around one to the left or one to the right. Okay, so that's the crab library. So what we have to do is we have to right click and upload that to our Pico so that we've got that on our Pico device or ESP32 or Feather or whatever we're using. And then I've got this test piece of code here, which simply says from crab import Pico crab from time import sleep. We create a little crab from our crab uh, class that we've just created and we can make it stand up, sleep for a second. We can make it sit down and sleep for a second and so on. Now it's not going to do an awful lot at the moment because we haven't I actually haven't got um, the limbs properly plugged in there. But what we can do is we can watch this little servo here and we can see what this actually does when I run this code. So let's just rearrange the screen a little bit so you can see the code. You can see the, uh, the terminal there as well. So if we run this now, let's see what happens. So currently it's not doing anything there. Maybe I need to just rearrange those. of which one was the one that had the faulty let's see oops basically just trying to plug the wire in there so i'm using there we go i heard it move then so let's just move that servo horn to the right one there we go so if we just do that again we should see that little servo move Nope, it's actually on that one. It is on that one. Right, what we'll do then, I'll grab another servo horn so we can see both at the same time. Let's just grab... That's what we do. We just want to see it move, basically. So I hold that up there like so. Get that to focus in, and then I click Run. Yeah, you can see that one twitching it a little bit. It's completely dependent as well on how much power is in this uh, this battery. Uh, currently, it looks like it's it's green the light, which indicates that the the battery is actually fully not fully charged. Where's the LED? It's just there, actually. You just see the green LED there. That indicates that the battery has got um, sufficient power to power the Pico and any of the servos that are on there. But um, you can just plug this cable this cable into the socket down there to charge up the, the the 18650 and it indicates that so if we just lift this up if I plug that into there instead we get a little charge indicator there this little red LED we can see that on the screen there but there's a little red LED that's indicating and you can probably see the the, sh the, the cast of the light there there you go, there's the red LED there. So that's indicating that this is uh, is charging it up. 
So really loving this board. I think it's a really great, I'm going to probably buy a couple more of these because it's got the battery on board and it's got all those server headers on board. That means it's really great for doing this kind of robotics project. So I'm going to do this as a part part one of part two, I think, um, of, of a two part season, series of the Pico Crab because I want to print out the, the final version that's got the face on it, that has the, the grabber arms and has all the code. Um, but I am in the middle of just uploading the code. Um, if I go over to Kev's Robots and I show you what this looks like. So I have a, a development version of Kev's Robots on my computer here. So it's uh, running locally under my Docker container. And what we can see on here is we have Pico Crab version two. And I've also put on here the reviews that I do. So I've done a review of the, the Wukong 2040 that will go live shortly. So that's got a, what score did I give this? Uh, it's got four out of five. And if we scroll down to the review score, we can look at that. I think it's 4.1, 4 there we go. And I've indicated there why I've given it that score. So it scored pretty highly. Um, the thing that lets down most companies is the packaging and also the environmental. So if you don't have an environmental statement on your website that says how you um, source and produce and distribute things, uh, and with a recycling thing as well, what materials you use, then you're not going to get a high score on that. So this just encourages people to be more environment, environmentally friendly. And it goes through all the basic stuff there of the uh, what this has got. You can see there the rainbow lights, the buttons. Let me zoom in a bit on that. Um, I'm just going to turn that off actually because it's making funny noises there. Um, we've got the buzzer, we've got the uh, button A, button B, the um, rainbow lights as they call them. NeoPixels is a Adafruit copyrighted term, so you can't call it that. You've got the charge indicator, the battery connector itself, the charge indicator, the reset button, the motor interfaces, the 12 GPIOs, look at them all though. And then we have the, uh, the I squared C interface as well. So it's pretty capable board, pretty chunky. Uh, really quite like that. So that review will be going live very, very shortly. And if I go over to the Learn, um, I've also put up there the Smars Quad uh, course. This isn't probably up to my usual standard. This is basically a cut and paste from the SmarsFan.com website. Um, but I have put on there like what you need to have, like the Pi Zero, the servos, you need eight of them, and the, uh, the PCA9685 board. And basically you can go through and figure out how to how to build this. I did some nice graphics at the time, so they're all included on there. Um, but I don't think I did a lot about the code. I think I basically just point to where you can download the code from. And interestingly, the code that it points you to is pretty much the code that we've looked at today. Okay, so let me go back over to, to here. Is there anything else worth calling out? So yeah, I've also included like a courses section here as well. Uh, so you can get to all the courses, but you can also just see them there. And you can also see the sort of blog entry. So I've put a blog there about Pico Crab 2. So you can see this video that we're looking at now. We can uh, see the bill of materials for this project. You can see some of the 3D um, pictures of it there. And you can also download the STL files as they are today and grab the code too. So if you want to look at the walking code, you can grab it from there and just go over to the, um, the Pico Crab or the, the Crab code, in fact, because that's pretty basic, that one. We go back over to the, the crab.py, that's the is it a thousand lines long or something. It's quite a lot of quite a lot of text in there. <laughs> there we go. Most of it's just a descriptive text. But yeah, it's over a thousand lines long there. Cool. So yeah, I'm looking to make that um, also work on the Pico W so that we'll have a built-in web web interface so you can make your robot be controlled uh, you know over Wi-Fi, which would be pretty cool. Cool, cool. So that's everything I've got for you today. So if you're watching this on replay, this is the point of the video. I'll say thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time. And if you're watching this live, we'll now go over to a bit of a Q&A. So let's see what people have been uh, been talking about on here. So let me uh, scroll up to the top there. And I've got a few bits and pieces to show you as well um, from Mailbag. It's got Richard from uh, Ayup from Yorkshire. One of my favourite places. We we go to uh, like go to Whitby for our holidays in Yorkshire. Alex is working in York, <laughs> Yorkshire, and also um, 
Haworth. We go to uh, Haworth quite a lot just as a bit of a day trip. So Rich was talking about the inky screen, reminds him of a 70s photo. So yeah, I've got one of these here. This is the, um, I think it was launched last week. This is the new inky impression screen from Pimeroni. Uh, and this one connects to a Raspberry Pi, um, like zero or Raspberry Pi four. And the nice thing about this is it's seven colors. So that has got no power going to it at all at the moment. There's nothing plugged in, but look, it's got a picture on there. A pretty high res picture. You can see that if I hold it really close, you can just see there's some dithering there on the, uh, the picture, but it's got four colors, but look how vibrant those colors are. Uh, yet there's no power going to it. So this is a similar kind of screen, an e-ink screen to like a, um, a Kindle, something like that, which is just black and white, but this has got seven colors on it. So this is pretty nice. It has all these different buttons on the side and Quest connectors, uh, and it's even got breakouts on there as well. So pretty nice screen, this. So that's arrived so I can actually do the intro video to it because I've not done that yet. And then the other thing that Pimeroni launched, I happen to have a copy of, was the the Cosmic Unicorn. So this is similar to the Galactic Unicorn. You might have seen one of these Galactic Unicorns previously. Just look at all these pixels here. Good grief. You can see there just how massive this thing is. So this has got like a 441 extra pixels than this one has. So it's got 1024 pixels in a 32 by 32 grid. And this one also has a four user buttons on that side and five user control buttons on that side. And it's even got a little speaker on board as well. Uh, it's got a battery connector, so you can plug in a battery. Where's that little battery gone? Let's plug this in and see what happens. I don't know if I've got any demo code loaded on here. A bit fiddly to get these pushed in there. Let me try and do, do it that way. There we go. So it's got the, uh, the fire. If you can see that with the, the studio lights, if I go over to the overhead, I turn off that and I put this underneath there. You can see how nice that looks. It's kind of that orientation you'd kind of see it in. But yeah, that's like a, a fire. So yeah, and it's got this uh, this speaker on the back, so you can do all kinds of like little buzzer things as well, which is pretty neat. So quite like these. Quite like these. Let's go back and plug that one back in there. There we go. So I'm gonna have a play about with that. I'll try and think of some fun project to do with that. 32 by 32, that's the original pixel size, the icon size, isn't it, for like Windows icons and Mac icons. So I could do something like that. I do need to do something with this um, this Kitronics board. I bought this a while ago. Um, and I think these are quite cheap as well, quite low cost, but this has got like four motor, motor connectors on it and they're screw terminals. So that should be pretty easy to screw things in got the power thing in the side and you've got some servo headers as well how many of those have we got we have eight servo headers so it's got quite a few servo headers on there and obviously we're gonna have like a pico w on there too so we'd have to provide power in and have a circuit to control or charge that power but once we've got the power in we can do some stuff with this and this is this is kind of smart territory size so it's kind of the same size as you can see if I had a smiles to hand. It's the same kind of size would fit nicely in there. This even has like a little on-off switch there as well, which is pretty neat. Always something that you want to have if you're using batteries and whatnot. What else did I get recently? So um, the Wukong board, I bought all these um, these servos. Like I said, Pim had a, is it Maker's Month in uh, March? March Maker's Month. So I bought eight of these DS92. 9mg servos pretty much for this project now um what else is there is there anything else i can show of course i bought myself a present for getting 15,000 subscribers which is what the balloons are there bought myself a new mac mini so i've not fully moved into that yet i don't know if when you when you get yourself like a, a new computer do you sort of restore from a backup or do you just sort of start again from scratch because like there's nothing installed on it so i'm having to install everything like fusion 360 and visual studio code now Visual Studio Code will bring all, I think I've synced my settings to GitHub, so it'll just pull them all down as like a JSON file or whatever, which makes it easier to get, to move back into that. So yeah. So let's have a look what else people have been talking about. So Adam says seven calls, wasn't it where there was more than three? So yeah, there's there's quite a few. There's, um, they do different sizes that I've got. This one as well. There's another one. Um, 
I'm sure I've got that to hand somewhere. Cannot see it though. I can't see it for looking. <laughs> I'm sure it's there somewhere. Anyway, this one is the um, 5.7 and there's also a 4.0 size as well. And these are all seven color. So yeah, pretty, pretty neat. And these just run on that little battery like that one. They can just sort of stick on that little Velcro square there. And if the battery's charged up, these things, they last for months, the, the batteries on them. Um, so it can it can go online, grab the heading headlines for the news or cartoon thing, update the screen and then immediately go off uh, into sort of very low power mode. So it'll last um, many, many months on that. Uh, so what else we got on here? So Diego says, hello, my friend. Congratulations on your excellent work. Oh, thank you for that, Diego. Really appreciate that. <laughs> Richard says, crabs have six legs. I was thinking about this was like a, not a decapitated crab, but a crab, but somebody pulled the legs off, maybe. That was my excuse. Adam says, I've killed two M56Cs building a Smiles quad. Put the battery in the wrong way around. Oh my goodness, no, that's not good. You don't want to do that. Uh, so Diego says, is it possible to enable subtitles in Spanish? So, yes, I will do that on the replay video for sure. Now that I know that that's something you want, I will definitely do that for the videos. Um, what the, I, There is a setting when I go live. I can either have really quick, really low latency. So when you type something, I see that within the, the about three seconds of you typing that. It's really, really quick. Or I can make it like about a minute delay, but then it can do subtitles in real time. And I choose to go really quick so I can have almost like a real time conversation with people. So, but now I know that you uh, you want that, I will, I will enable that. That's why that isn't there if you're looking for it on the live stream. So, <laughs> skill wasn't wasted on me, Richard says. Uh, what else we've got? So... So Adam says, subtitles are hard to do on streams and only work on recorded streams. And I speak very quickly. I don't know if that affects uh, how well the, the uh, subtitles, the automatic ones go. But yeah, no problem at all for that. Uh, we've got Wayne here as well. Hey, Wayne, how's it going? Um, so let's see what else people got. Low poly, low polygon counts. Yes. Did I not explain that? I probably didn't. Did I? I think I rushed over that. Um, so Alex, as you can see, is not in the studio today. She's uh, at home in York. Uh, so hey Alex and uh, Rich says hi there so Kevin must work with TensorFlow Lite and MicroPython yes yeah, so I'm going to look into um, using TensorFlow Lite on, and MicroPython um, for some future videos I've been learning some of that in the background um, what was I looking at most recently on there I can't remember what it was to do with now but I was definitely looking at something on MicroPython um, to do some like machine learning on a Pico, which is pretty cool. <laughs> so have I have I typed any crab jokes yet? <laughs> Not yet. But when you type crab Pico crab enough times, you you end up typing stupid stuff like that. Uh, so what else? <laughs> Don't get crabby about my dad jokes. <laughs> hey Dale, how's it going? Uh, so I <laughs> don't sidestep up to it. So I was I was in two minds about. Um, what to do with is that the thing I dropped before? I didn't drop it, it fell off. Grab this. I've been playing around with these um uh Theo Jansen leg mechanisms and this was just like a little prototype because it was quick to print. So that bit sort of stays still and there's like a little piece that rotates round and that piece that rotates round makes the, the leg mechanism sort of do its thing. So I'm gonna have a, a couple of these on um maybe like two deep on each side of a robot and it'd be able to sort of move an even turn depending on which way these go they don't really make sense if you've just got one of them you have to see you have to see a few of them in motion but they're pretty neat as a mechanism and it's like a really natural kind of walking um, mechanism to it and uh, it's just got a whole bunch of different sort of pivot points on there so i did have a a sheet oops i didn't drop it it just flew out my hand so this is the Theo Jensen leg system and there's all these ho holy numbers down there you can see there how many is that? Is that 13 different numbers that you need to have uh, and it says there Theo Jensen's leg system invented in 1991 based on the holy numbers so you basically just fed in these numbers to figure out what would make that uh, nice walking motion 
So yes, we'll we'll do a different video on that. I think once I've uh, I've got that up and running. Um, so why is the Smiles Quad a good base for crab robots? <laughs> they snap together. <laughs> See what you did there. <laughs> it <laughs> it will put the pinch on you. Oh, this is great. There must be some <laughs> jokes about these crab jokes. Um, never a true word said. It, yes, my smile squad pinched me a few times. It did, didn't it? Because it blew your your thing up. <laughs> uh, you shelled out for a new joke book yet. Yeah. <laughs> I think we need a, a dad joke section on Kev's robots. I'm a big fan of uh, dad jokes. The motor's having coder support. So I don't think so. No, they're, they're simply just... Uh, like a ground and uh, voltage and uh, if you swap them around the voltage goes in the opposite direction so it's pretty simple that one you could probably use the gpios on the servo headers though to, to build your own encoder i don't think that'd be too difficult to do um clawful always good in a pinch um so dale they don't have um encoder support these are um and this is one of those like let me just take this off here take it or leave it kind of thing so the motor headers if i just show you closely on here they are simply just um like a jst connector type there we are so there's like two pins per motor one motor two motor three motor four um so they're just the the two pins they don't have encoders on there they could have gone for like pim Roney did let's grab one of these here this is the motor 2040 board so this one does have the encoders on there. So if I hold it up that way, you can see there they've actually got like six pins, I think it is, for each of the motors. Uh, and that's because they've got the encoder support on there too. Uh, but these boards are, you know, quite a bit more money, but obviously they're much better quality from the point of view of it's got the encoders built in, they've got the code that runs on it. Uh, it's got a built-in RP2040. Um, what else has this got? And the quest connector on there as well so yeah these are slightly higher spec i would say uh what else have we got on there <laughs> let's all clam down shall we <laughs> these crappy jokes <laughs> love it uh i'm not crabby today in fact i'm feeling quite clawsome i love it dale <laughs> glad to hear you're feeling clawsome um <laughs> give kevin a claws up it's a shame we can't have like a little claw as the uh the instead of a thumbs up thing, you can customize that. Shell, shell out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> please do claw that like button. Yes, absolutely. Just fishing for a decent pun, which Adam says. <laughs> and they keep going. You can shell out for a coffee as well. No need to clam down. Please pike, comment, and shell scribe. <laughs> no need to be shocking. I can see <laughs> I can see these just keep on going and going. Um so what else is that? So Dale says I'm trying to fix one of my um what's that Odin F3 Amazon return printer. Okay. Um scuttling over to Discord and Twitter. <laughs> Scuttle that pun. Uh, hey Michael, how's it going? I think you're new to the stream as well, aren't you? So Diego says, uh, Carrie Gas from Columbia regarding your wife. Uh, thank you for your your teacher, your work. Thank your teacher, your work. Cool, cool. Um, what else we got on there? <laughs> Just more more puns. <laughs> good, good. Hey Julian. And uh, Algernon as well. Howdy peeps. Hey Algernon, how's it going? Uh, what else we've got? <laughs> More things to drop. There's so much to drop. <laughs> if you've not seen me on the stream before, I tend to be a bit clumsy and drop stuff. I, I, I was thinking, like, is there something wrong with me? I'm just clumsy. I think that's all it is. But yeah, 2018. It's. I always like to put the date in the actual source code, so when I'm opening it, I'm like, ooh, what's that? Yeah, you can do P you can do object detection on Picos. Um, I mean, I guess the, the challenge is the cameras for the Picos, but I understand that there may be some products coming out in the future that have Picos and cameras on them, not from Raspberry Pi, but from other companies. I probably said too much already on that one. 
<laughs> but I understand that that is something that's in the works. And of course, there is like the um, the SP camera thing. You can use this with Python. Um, it's just a bit slow. So you can grab stills. You can't really do video real time and do object detection, but you could do stills and then object detection using this. So yes, you can do that. And you can also just grab images from here, send that up to like an MQTT broker, have that have another computer crunch through that image and then send back to the Pico W over Wi-Fi, like the results of what it can see. So you, you can have all kinds of stuff going on there. Um, so Adam says, the, the code drove me crazy when I first read it. I could not grasp the positioning. It's one of those things. I think you just have to sit down and figure out how this thing is going to walk and what each of the servos needs to do to sort of make it walk. Um, I've got a video clip of it um, somewhere. If I go onto YouTube, I think it's one of the very first clips I actually uploaded. Um, so let's do Smiles Quad. And let's see if we can find that. There we go, four years ago. Right, let me just bring this up and we can see this in action. So this is a Smiles Quad. It's that, that very same one I've got here. There it is. So that's running my code and it's dragging behind it the actual Pico W, or the Pico, the original Pico. They can see just being dragged on the floor there. And all it's got connected to it is just one wire from the, um, uh, from the PCA9685. And that's also providing some power to it as well. But you can see there, each of the things, it looks like it's kind of like doing this, but it's quite smooth. It's not like just, just it's quite smooth. So there we go. So let's get back over to here. Yeah, I've been listening to some Paul Hardcastle and uh, Jan Hammer. Remember him from uh, Crockett's theme? I just saw them pop up and I was like, oh, they, they look quite fun. Uh, so let's have a see what else people have been talking about. Uh, da, da, da. <laughs> says the Morse code function you really have looked at the code well done so the Morse code function I just took that out just for simplicity we can add that back in it's a piece of cake we can have one little foot do all the tapping out of messages it's easier than you'd think and the source code is in uh, is it Smiles Lab I'll put that back in because like, why not that would be quite fun to put back in but it's definitely fun to demonstrate that one uh, <laughs> uh, what's that say there Claw your way to Kevin's Discord and interact with all of us. <laughs> so, hey, Julian, how's it going? So, Roland's ordered one. Awesome. Is that the um, the Wukong board? Awesome. Oh, or is it the uh, the uh, Cosmic Unicorn? Because they're pretty awesome. Look at all those pixels. I was thinking to myself, just how many pixels do you think Pimroni had to order on the reels to uh, to make thousands of these? I mean, it's it's literally millions of pixels, isn't it? But so much you can do with it. They are so fun. Uh, so, <laughs> yes, guess Kevin's going to have galactic unicorns in his window. So count the galactic unicorns. So here's one. <laughs> there's one there. There's one there. And then there's another one just over here as well. They're not doing anything too interesting at the moment. But um, I should do the uh, the YouTube subscriber count one. That'd be quite a good thing to have on there. Uh, I wrote the code for the original, like, tiny little unicorn. Um, that's over there, actually. I, I, it's only got, like, seven seven pixels by... I can't remember, is it, like, 10, 14, something like that? It's not got a great deal of pixels, but, yeah, you could scroll little messages across there. Uh, what else have we got? So, on your new Mac Mini, using the built-in migration system, it'll walk you through pulling all the data over. So, yeah, I was thinking about, do I do that or do I start from scratch and just have a clean... Do I have... Diff now I've got two computers, do I... And, I... and I have more than two computers. I'm looking down at another two just on the floor there. And uh, there's the, the myriad of Raspberry Pis that I've got online right now as well. But um, I was thinking about, do I just have this one for, like, live streaming? So, at the moment, I'm live streaming over my laptop. Um, and I could just live stream from the, the Mac Mini. And that's kind of what I bought it for. But I also want to be able to do a bit of software development because I've got these great big screens here. Um, you've probably not seen this before. There we go. Both of the screens are working now. So I've got my notes on here. You can see you can see the mess that I live in. 
<laughs> you can see that little piece of paper that I just popped out over there. You can see all my lights and everything, all the robots, all the bits and pieces. You can see it on the screen there, we've got the YouTube, we've got my live channel there as well. Um, and then up above me is all the, uh, the sort of um, 3D printed stuff. So that's that's what's going on there. But yeah, there's the Mac Mini. You can just see it just hiding under there. And it's currently just on that screen just over here. See my little mouse moving about. So yeah, that's kind of what I'm, I'm thinking about. Um, maybe just having Fusion on there, Visual Studio Code, maybe a Docker and all the live streaming stuff. Now the live streaming stuff doesn't pull across all the config for... Sorry, the, the Migration Assistant doesn't pull across all the stuff for the... Um, the live streaming software so i will have to set that back up so that's on my list of stuff to do let's have a look what else we have on here so um adam says um all all i've done this month is treating myself to a new hdmi capture card so which one have you gone for i've got the uh the elgato um hd 60 plus for bringing in this camera feed that you can see here uh, rich says uh, ever thought of getting a cuddly toy and fitting a pico two into it uh, with a tilt sensor i have indeed thought of that that is definitely on my list of make a robot out of like a, a builder bear bear something a, a bit like that megan robot but with a builder bear bear uh, i was thinking about how that would work inside all the different 3d printed elements to it that'd be a really fun project probably quite a big build that one but yeah like an internal skeleton exactly that richard yep that's exactly what i'm thinking it would require quite a few servos but now that we have um there's quite a few different boards that we could use we could use several of these um not that one that one the servo 2040 that's got like uh 18 servo headers on it but if you've chucked those out before look at all those servo headers 18 of them we could have a few of them all connected together that'd be pretty cool uh, yes you can do that and adam says is it possible to make moving crabs use called strand beasts you can absolutely so i did a video on uh, how to design one of those if you if you search for smars walker on youtube you'll find the uh, the video show that we did about that quite a while ago if i just find that as well uh, so yes there it is so i did a whole show about um when was this does it say how old this is it's about a year ago so there you go there's all the different magic numbers uh, you can see the little animation of it working there and so on and there's the sort of 3d design of it and how everything fits together but i never actually printed one out um, I think some of these pieces clashed when they uh, they moved, so I had to sort of redesign them slightly. But the idea was you could have like um, like these nice sort of gears. Oh yeah, there you go. And I have, this is one um, like a toy one that uses the same principle. I've still got that up, I think just above me over there. So yeah, um, absolutely. Let's see what else people have been talking about on here. Uh, so Dale says I've got two motor 2040 boards and an inventor 2040 as well cool cool and uh, red rubicon hey from vienna how's it going in vienna uh, so rich says you can tell he's of a certain age with <laughs> these jokes <laughs> we're waiting for santa claus oh, generation x dad rules that at what point do you find dad jokes funny i think i've always been a pun person it's like the highest form of intelligence lowest form of wit isn't it um, the inky screen should have a sign that reads number of days since Kevin dropped something, but it'd only ever need to say zero on there, wouldn't it? Because obviously I drop something every single day. Um, so early ESP camera versions overheated by the way. I probably got those. I think I think I have at least one of them, uh, and I've got these newer ones as well. Um, this stream <laughs> moderator's gone crabbing. <laughs> zero days since Kevin dropped something. So Tim says, uh, does red shirt Jeff have a red shirt about that? Does the Jeff have a t-shirt about that? I don't know, does he? Does he have, like, I've dropped something? I'll have to, uh, have to speak to Jeff about that. It's been the last day since I recompiled the kernel. Yes, he has that, doesn't he? Um, how about hacking a Furby? I may or may not have a Furby um, behind me. Where's that gone? It's a pink Furby as well. I ordered one online, and uh, it's got, like, these little screens for eyes, which is quite nice, but I was more interested in the eye mechanism for... Uh, for the Bubo robot, but there there is on uh, TikTok, on Instagram, and on Twitter a little video clip of the Furby talking to Bubo, so we could certainly hack that as well. 
Um, you got a, a generic USB capture card less than $20 and used to record ERP4. So I do have a couple of those myself. I think they're all plugged in actually. They're like a little USB. It looks like a memory stick, but it's um, got a HDMI connector on there. I think they're only like $7 or something. Um, they're okay. You can't have too many of them. Otherwise, uh, your, your computer basically just stops working. You could put a QR code on there. You could. I'm not sure what the minimum size of pixels needed for a QR code is. That'd be worth having a look at. Uh, well, I'm thinking to myself there. I know with the badges, they can do QR codes. Um, the badge of 24TW, which are all hanging up over there. So you can just see it dangling just there. That's the new one, the Badger 2040W. So yeah, so I think that's um, probably enough for today's show. I hope you enjoyed uh, looking at the beginnings of Pico Crab version 2. And I'm looking at building this one out because it's a walking robot and it uses MicroPython code. And it has that really cool Wukong 2040 board in there as well. So uh, thank you so much for watching with me. I shall see you next time. Bye for now.